Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Midi tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at round tripping between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Now if you don't know what round tripping is, that means you basically work in one program, and then you go and you take what you worked in into another program, and then take it back from that program to another one. So it's like a round trip, you know? Go from Austin to Nashville to Austin. A round trip. So starting out, we have this sequence of some kind of landscapey nature stuff that I just put together real quick, and let's say that we love this edit and it is just the bomb. And we want to take it into DaVinci Resolve to color grade it. How would we go about doing that? Well, it's pretty simple, and after you do it once, you'll kind of know how to do it from then on. There's a few little like finicky things, but this is sort of just the basics of round tripping between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing you do is you have your sequence, and let's name this something a little bit better. So I'll go over into list view, and we'll call this a sem symbol. Great. And now we'll take this and we'll go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML. And the XML is the file that will allow you to take your sequence from Premiere over into DaVinci Resolve pretty much identically. It won't transfer some effects or some transitions, but uh, for the most part, just as long as you have a really basic sequence with not too much happening, you can just take it over really easily into Resolve. So let me just navigate over to where I want this. New project, we will call this round tripping. And we'll call this nature sequence to color XML01. And that saves that out. So the next thing that you'll do is open up Resolve and you just create a new project and we will call this nature sequence. And it'll open up DaVinci Resolve just like you're used to. So when you're in here, you can just go up to file Import AAF, comma, EDL, comma, XML. Any of those formats will work. I like to use XMLs a lot because they always work. But if you want to use an EDL or AAF, you know, it's just a little different. If you're coming from an Avid, then you do an AAF. And if you're coming from some weird NLE that doesn't have either of those, you use an EDL. Anyway, import an XML. Then you'll navigate over to where you saved it. So we got ours in the Tuts folder. And then we've got round tripping, nature sequence to color, XML. Make sure that all your sequence settings are correct and these seem to be, and make sure you have, you know, your right timeline selected. Hit okay, and boom, that imports everything just exactly right. Now a few things to make sure of, make sure that you don't move your media in between uh, exporting the XML and importing the XML because the XML references the media where it was. You can always relink media, but it's just, just like, you know, don't be tricky about it. Just kind of do what you're supposed to. So now from here, you have it inside Resolve. So let's go and let's color this up real quick. Hit Alt F to make that a little smaller. And we will just do a real quick grade just because, you know, I want to. Just crank this saturation up and we will bump this lift down just a smidgen. Gamma up, Alt S, and we'll crank the saturation up. Not quite that much but close to that much. Kind of dig that. Let's add a secondary and let's make this grass green. Do that by going to our hue versus hue. And obviously this is kind of going a little bit outside the scope of just round tripping, but I'm having a lot of fun right now. So we'll make yellow green. Yeah, that's interesting enough. Like I said, this really isn't a color grading tutorial. All right, and let's do less on these guys. We'll just hit Alt A, Alt A to do a kind of basic grade and it will bump the saturation up and same on this one, Alt A and bump the saturation up and let's contrast it up just a smidgen more. So it's a little more dramatic. Cool, so now we've got our sequence. The next thing we'll do is go over to our deliver page and here's where you get some more options that can sort of throw some people for a loop. So let's take a look at them. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just kind of turn off our thumbnails so we have a little bit more room to work with. And then this is always very important. Hit select all over here to just get your timeline selected. Otherwise, you won't render any frames. Make sure that render is selected since, you know, it's 2014 and you're probably not editing the tape. And if you are, then you probably already know your workflow and no one's going to change you. So up here in our render settings, this is the important part. You've got basic, intermediate, and advanced. And for, you know, 90% of jobs you do, basic will be fine. Uh, it'll allow you to choose a preset if you want which is, you know, always cool. Uh, you can do individual source clips, which will render out each clip individually, which is very useful. Or single clip, which is what I normally end up doing because I'm lazy. 
uh, and the single clip will just render it out just like a single clip and then you can bring it back in and you do your audio sweetening if you want to do like titles and stuff. That's not what you do. Codec, Blackmagic Design says that they're better at these sort of compressed formats, but I still, uh, Media Encoder and other renderers do a better job of compressing stuff. So I'd say go with a less compressed format. I normally go with DNX HD uh, 36-8-bit, which, you know, isn't huge, but... You know, it's good enough. I'm doing stuff for web. If you're doing broadcast stuff, then, you know, be higher. But for me, I normally do DNX HD 36 8 bit because I'm just adding titles and kind of finishing up audio. So it's totally fine. And it's still a higher bit rate than I'm exporting it as eventually. Make sure your frame rate's right. Export audio if you have audio. Use a custom file name. I'll do nature sequence, V01R, and what my. V V and R little tag is, is version one, render one. And version is kind of client version and render is sort of Theo's render. So, you know, you'll play something back and then you'll be like, oh, you know, there's a, a frame of black in between those edits and you can go, you know, change that. And then, you know, render O2 or, oh, you know, audio is out of sync there, you know, change it, render O3. Always watch back your renders because no matter how experienced you are, you're probably going to screw up sometimes and... It's really embarrassing when the client sees that before you do. Then you can click where you want to render to. Let's go normal place, active projects, tuts, and round tripping. Okie dokes. And then from there you can render. In the intermediate tab, you have a few more options, uh, especially down here. You can uh, enable a flat pass, which uh, basically means no color correction. I didn't know what that meant at first. The first time I did that, I was like, oh, that's weird. But you're probably not going to use this very often. And then you can also create additional outputs, which is super nice. Uh, if you're also doing more like broadcast stuff, then you can select whether you want video levels or data levels. But that's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. I actually just read that part in the DaVinci Resolve manual. So I'm all fresh on that. But now in advance, you get even more stuff, which we don't really need to talk about because I'm going to use it less often. Basic is pretty much good for, like I said, 90% of projects. And for those other 10%, I'll probably make another tutorial covering more in depth what the other aspects do. All right, so we've got our whole timeline selected. Now you just need to add this to the render queue. So over there, and if you want to make another render, like if you just want that much, you can add another one to the render queue, but we're not going to. And then you can just hit start render. And oh, geez, that looks terrible. That's pretty funny. And we're done. So now over in Premiere, we can just go back and let's kind of organize this stuff. We'll hit control question mark to create a bin, call this footage, and we will select all of our footage, and drop it in there. And now let's just, oh geez, open this guy up. And then just kind of drop this on top of our other sequence and we can add, you know, titles, like look how bad this looks. And of course, you know, we'll make it Gotham because we watch too much Grayscale Gorilla. And we'll make it ultra because we watch too much grayscale gorilla. And we'll make it red to make it look even more terrible. Drop that on top and you can render it from there. Look at that. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. It's a super handy thing to know how to do. And saying, you know, round tripping always sounds cool. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't, be sure to give it a dislike. If your feelings are slightly more complicated than that, be sure to tell me something down in the comments because reading the comments is always a lot of fun. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Minister Media YouTube channel. If you want even more engagement, then go to our social media stuff with Facebook and Twitter. Links are down in the description. Even more than that, you can go to the website at www.meesternermedia.com. Link also down in the description. If you think that your friends would benefit from learning how to round trip from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, be sure to share the tutorial on your various social platforms. Once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye.